Hi, my name is Graham Waller. I'm the owner of Winchell's Restaurant here in Lexington, Kentucky. What's going to go on here tonight is I'm going to take 60 of the best dishes I can make, pair it with six of the best wines I could find, and just make a full meal to celebrate me and Eric's cooking background along with my dad's 60th birthday and, you know, showcasing our talents. You know, started a year ago planning this. We've been prepping for over a week and a lot of prepping the last two days. We're going back to our fine dining roots that we, you know, we went to CIA and we trained in San Francisco and Hawaii and, you know, around the country, fine dining. It was the right time to, you know, for me and Abe to kind of get our skills back and do the kind of food we used to do. We haven't been able to do it in a long time, probably five or six years since we've done fine dining. So this is all French-based, uh, small coursing, wine pairing, fine dining meal. And I don't really think I've ever heard of a 60 course meal. I can't even begin to imagine what, what it would take to, to put out 60 different courses. When he puts his mind to something, he does it. And he does it the best he possibly can. All I know is it's going to be out of this world. All right, everybody, we're 15 minutes away from showtime. Time to get cooking. See ya. <laughs> Preparation, he, at first, I think he went back through some of his old cookbooks oh, and um, kind of went back through some old recipes and things he'd done at the different restaurants where he's worked. But a lot of it, I would say, was very last minute. Well, even some of the food I only planned in the last couple of days. You know, I had ideas and continually wrote down ideas, and then we met with Stella and met with Abe, you know, so we had a few of those meetings talking about brainstorming menu ideas. I had to get all the china and all the different plating together, order the food from different companies, organize it so it all came in at the same time, prepped it all the last couple of days. So it's just organization, you know, discipline, and, you know, just being very structured and focused on this dinner so we could, you know, not be nervous about it and just pull it off successfully. Graham and Greg share this same uh, devotion to craft and I think it's such an amazing testament uh, from a son to a father. So um, I have just been continually moved by the, the degree of the gesture. I was amazed that he would come up with the idea and I would have settled for five courses. <laughs> I would have settled for going out to dinner with him, um, but to do this it's just been great. It's just great. And small group, get to invite friends and my sisters and my family. And um, yeah, it's terrific. I think they should Liners. be going on the liners. Yeah, and, and then on the place. And then on the place, yeah. So you're going to have to run one out to Kenny. Tell him he's going to have to be quick with the big one. He's going to, over there, he's going to plate. And, yeah. It was a good jolt to, uh, to start the meal. It's going to have a lot of flavor. Uh, pea puree, mint, a little bit of yogurt on top, and a kind of a lemon sugar reduction. Give it some lemon and a little bit of sweet. Just bam, one little pop. It'll, you'll, you'll, it's flavor. It's gonna, you'll enjoy. <laughs> Get them. This is a uh, tomato consomme that I made and turned into a jelly. A little aspic style. An uh, untraditional, traditional Kentucky classic. Hey, Jimmy, grab me a new uh, cold plate. So you have a uh, tomato consomme jello with uh, poached. Poached little uh, pear tomatoes, green pear tomatoes, with uh, a <laughs> little balsamic, little chive oil. I mean, the love of food for me is, you know, like a lot of chefs would say, is seeing the ingredient, you know, and then just having that ingredient basically tell you what to do to it. I mean, that's the love of food in my mind. Like, a lot of people like to eat, 
but I mean the pure love of food is seeing a basil leaf in the ground growing its first sprout and loving it and thinking how beautiful that looks. You know, picking your first tomato of the season and salt, pepper, and vinegar and oil, that's it. You know, or, or uh, catching a fish and, and, you know, butchering it and eating it. It's the love of the product is the love of food. You know, fresh ingredients, you know, wholesome ingredients, local if possible, organic if possible. Um, and that's what a pure love of the food is all about. Not just eating and loving to go get steak and pizza, but loving the ingredients and where they come from and understanding where they come from and what it took to get that food to the plate. And that's why I love food so much, because I love the raw ingredient as much as anything. A little different flavor than a regular. <laughs> Oh man. Hope you all don't get too full. It's gonna to be tough, I know. No, this is a handmade hand crushed guacamole with uh, avocado obviously. Oh, yeah. Garlic, tomato, herbs, lime juice. And then just lump crab meat with a little bit of tequila, lime juice, um, minced chives, and salt. That's it. Just kept it real simple. I would just eat it in one bite, you know. You'll get lime, you'll get tequila, crab and guacamole. <laughs> Lemon juice, olive oil, green onion. Touch of ginger. Paul, Paul made this. Um, this is soy and grapefruit marinated tofu with a grapefruit wedge and then the sauce. So I would probably eat the tofu, eat the grapefruit, and then just shoot the juice. <laughs> tofu, grapefruit, and sauce? A little bit of soy. I think it'll look cool with the beet chip and maybe one of these even. Maybe blue. Yeah, fried beet, fried red beet with the soup is yellow beet. So just a roasted beet in the oven, basically pureed down with a little bit of cream and chicken stock and just leeks and, and uh, shallots. So real neutral flavors. And then fried beet chip to get a little more beet flavor and some crunch and then fresh tarragon just at the end because I like beet and tarragon kind of goes together. But I say we use the dressing that's in here. Just water. You're going to get full. It's nearly impossible not to. Parmesan, the Reggiano. Uh, cool. Marinated cremini mushroom. Dad told me this. I just marinated them raw overnight um, and haven't even cooked them. Oh, that's yeah, really and then uh, just steam the spinach just real quickly, kind of Asian style, and then just put it together with the natural vinaigrette and a shave of Parmesan and chive. Yeah. So it's super. Put it on the Winchell's menu. <laughs> Um, a six minute egg, which is six minute boiled egg, so it's still a little bit soft, which I know Moby likes. And then uh, just chives, lemon zest, a little bit of caviar on top, and chives. And and um, capers. Capers, yeah. Capers, capers, capers. That's yeah. unbelievable looking. Isn't it cool looking? Awesome. Yeah, I like that one. Fresh oyster on a half shell, and we're going to uh, take these and marinate them in a little mignonette. We were just talking about what kind of mignonette we're actually going to do. Clean the shells off, put them back in so it's just nice, one good, clean bite of oyster marinated with no grit, hopefully. So it says vinegar, black pepper, and shallot. And normally you would dip the oyster in it. We just went in, took the oyster out, and marinated it, so it'd be easier. Yeah. Easy to write. I didn't make it. We're going to have to eat it quick, so you don't have to wait. Champagne sorbet. Yeah. It doesn't freeze that easily because of the liquor, so we have to do it quick. One second, then you can go ahead. The baby romaine, a kind of a rustic Caesar salad. So we didn't make a Caesar dressing, we just kind of soft poached eggs and anchovies and garlic and lemon and rough chopped it. So it's like the Caesar ingredients, but we just, you know, just kind of mash it with a fork instead, and just a soft poached egg. Is that 
Yeah, it's a mini version of a salad Lyonnaise, which was a kind of a lunch salad with frisee and bacon and warm vinaigrette and a poached egg on top. So we just did it with a quail egg and just did a mini version of it. Quail egg? Yeah. Really? <laughs> roasted red beet. We had yellow beets earlier. These are uh, roasted red beet, pistachio crusted goat cheese warmed in the oven. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then just a little drizzle of pistachio crumbles. We serve this at the restaurant, something real similar, so we just did a little baby version. Do you wake up in the morning and think like that? How about... I think what? Think about, how do you think about these things? Coming up with the dishes. Do you come up with these... Uh, do you know, they just come to you like poetry? No, it's no, it's just seeing them, practicing them, you know, over the years, basically, and reading about it. Clarified uh, beef broth, really kind of an advanced cooking technique. Have to use protein, egg yolks. Uh, a lot of times you use different kind of uh, proteins and vegetables, and um, you cook it slow, and all this stuff coagulates at the top and it separates and it clarifies your cooking medium. So what you end up with is a clear broth and then all the impurities kind of roast up to the top of the raft. And what you end up with is a very clear broth. Yeah, changed my life. Yep. So what do we have from concept? Beef, beef broth. Yeah, fortified beef stock. Yeah, it's hot. And some veggies in there. Get a picture of the pouring at the same time. Was it a square foot or a square yard or what? How you feeling, man? I feel good. It's smooth as soap. I like everything. The only thing, thing I'm concerned about is when we start getting into the braised meat, like the rabbit leg, and the, I just want to make sure all that's perfect. That's what I'm going to be on the line for. <laughs> I'm just worried about having the energy last. <laughs> it's two days, very long days, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I love it, though. Hey, honey, I'm ready for the... I got Kenny's coming out here. Tonight. You do? Yeah. Sure, the green. Oh, I love it, dude. <laughs> yeah, people like it. It's a fan favorite. Wild mushroom soup. Uh, black, not too wild. Black trumpet, cremini, and portobello. So truffle oil? Kind of off kilter. Yeah, pancetta. I just guessed, guessed if there's truffle oil. It's not. Yeah, sauteed with pancetta and bacon, then finished with a little truffle oil and just those like high roasted sliced mushrooms. Truffle oil is about the richest yeah. thing in the world. One of the richest. This is, we've maybe been making this throughout the years. It's one of our standards. Yeah, just, I mean, took the shells. We got lobster later, so I took the shells and made the bisque and took some of the meat and put it in this. So it's just really intense flavor, strong. I mean, some people, this is a super strong lobster bisque because it's oh. done the real way, in my mind. Put the lobster in this lobster. Caviar. Real simple though. Cauliflower, just really real water. Keep saying real simple. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's sturgeon caviar. Well, Russian caviar is like almost so. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. It's Can good. Be, okay. Serve the blood orange sorbet. And thankfully, we get to turn the page. <laughs> oh, I feel great. The soups just went out. They loved every one of them. So far, everything's good. I think it's going to get trickier as we go now.
ravioli. That ravioli dish was good. We need clams. So we made a real strong clam broth with fresh clams and, and checked them out. And reduced that sauce all the way down and a little bit of cream so the broth has a lot of flavor. So, very simple again. Very simple. I love it. Mm. Well, that's good. Just the toasty garlic and shell. Super out. Well, what is sweet bread? It's cow thymus, isn't it? Yeah. It's a thymus from a cow. Which is in land. feel about that one? My favorite dish, sweet bread, cabbage, and the egg. I just, different, rustic. I love sweet breads, they're crispy and golden. Oh. Poached the sweet breads last night, pressed them overnight so they get good and firm, and then we just cooked them, sauteed them in butter, get them crispy on the outside. And then a fried quail egg on top to give it some sauce. It's beautiful though, pale, not overdone. I'm telling you, our technique, we made this in 20 minutes. They're already saw it. There's stuff that take hours to make it, and they still don't know what they're doing. We had this dish at the 50th, the foie gras torsion. Oh, that's right. And I just, I mean, just <laughs> took the foie gras. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, and I just split it, took a couple veins out of it, marinated it in bourbon, salt, pepper, and sugar. Yummy. Posted it for 90 seconds, that was it. <laughs> Picked it up out of the, and then hung it upside down last time. <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, I mean, it's so, it's just yeah, like, it's dry, wow. dry. Yeah, I like butter. Open ravioli, like a lamb shank ravioli. Uh, the first ravioli we did, we, we shut them for the sweet, for the um, butternut squash. This is going to be more like a pappardelle you fold it over. Uh, so this is the lamb shank stuffing for the open ravioli. Lamb shank, which we braised for about six hours, pulled it off the bone and then puree that sauce that we cooked it in with carrot, celery, onion. It's got an unbelievable amount of flavor. And then use that as the sauce and then put all the meat in the, it's good, all the meat in the middle of it. Are we halfway done now, almost? Yeah. Well, yeah. One more halfway and the cheese course is pretty easy. about 11.30 and we are halfway through as far as the menu goes. Substantially, I think we have less to go as far as size, so that's a good thing. But this last um, set of courses, people were really starting to get tired. Um, Brenda had to take a nap. I think that the lemon shooter was timed perfectly because before that, they weren't finishing the dishes. They were starting to you know, slump in the chair, and the shooter kind of woke them up, and now they're opening presents, so that's a good thing. We're feeling pretty good. Uh, the next uh, 10 courses are gonna be a little bit lighter, more fish, we're gonna go a little bit more lighter, uh, go, go back from red to white wine again. Uh, so hopefully these next few courses will be a little bit lighter and um, not so filling. And then we'll get ready for the big meat course, the big meat grand finale chapter. I'm worried about you know, Basically, like, shock to my system. <laughs> like, the foie gras was just too rich. I couldn't do all the foie gras at that point in the meal. And it's going to be like Monty Python. I think it's going to be like that. One more, one more. That's a life of them. You know, I'll soldier on. That's what we're here for, once in a lifetime. And if I have to stay up all night to do this, I'll, I'll do it. They really liked the um, ravioli at the beginning of this set. They really liked the snail, escargot, whatever. They, they liked, oh, the lobster bisque. It was a huge hit. They loved that. Um, 
They've liked it all, though, you know? I mean, I think some of the stuff's been trying something new for some people, and I think people are starting to get full at this point. But all in all, I could not have asked for it to go any better than it's going. <laughs> We blanched the garlic three times. Fresh water, bring to a boil. Fresh water, bring to a boil. Fresh water, bring to a boil. Then rinse it again, and then blanch parsley and just puree those together. So a real simple, clean, light garlic, earthy kind of parsley flavor, seared scallop, lemon zest on top. Successful dish. I'm feeling full <laughs> and wonderful. Thank you. I, I, I will I'm not make Armando. it. I'm wondering I, if I can make I, it. I, I, I'm going to make I it. I give up. You're going to make it. Wait I'm going to make it. Uh, I haven't looked ahead. That's the secret. That's one of the secrets. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, never experienced so many flavors. <laughs> I'm back. She's back, and that's nice. <laughs> I made it to 1.30 in the morning, number 37. I feel bad leaving early because the food was wonderful. I am leaving, and um, what? Um, I am stuffed, is that what you said? No. <laughs> but I just can't go anymore. Uh, this was the most fabulous meal of all time. Um, uh, God bless everybody, and uh, I'm going home. Everybody's fearing the next course, I think. We, we have another foie gras and the meat. a real simple parsnip puree. Just peel the parsnips and cook them in cream. That was it. Until the cream was gone and pureed and they're so sweet. That is gorgeous. Love it. Alright, we'll photograph that one. Really this is the one I've been waiting for all night. But I mean, like, that's a secret of like, sometimes... I love that. Good mac and cheese. Good fresh fries. Push her on. 
with goat cheese. It's got an awesome ring around it. That's my favorite part. It's got all the flavor. I'm not going to leave it. I'm just going to put out a little bit of it. And then wrap up the rest. Came a bear, which I like. It's not my favorite, but it's neutral and pretty. People like it. Oh. Paul would never deserve to see this old man. Paul, we bet Montbriac. Probably my favorite of all of them. You got a vegetable ash on the outside. It's kind of like Brie, but it's got a little bit of a blue vein. And then Humboldt Fog, which is a... Uh, my favorite. Yeah, it's good too. It's kind of like a blue vein vegetable ash, so they are a little similar. professionally, it was executed professionally, it was a little extreme, but the bottom line is professionals executed professional job. The food went out as we wanted. I'm, I'm happy it's over, you know, it's done. Job well done.